so we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and there's a theme of sight and spiritual insight. And so we come before God now, recognising our need of God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have for mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray, thinking of any special intentions that you may have. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope and charity and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord says this, Shout with joy for Jacob, hail the chief of nations, proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them back from the land of the north and gather them from the far ends of the earth, all of them, the blind and the lame, women with child, women in labour, a great company returning here. They had left in tears. I will comfort them as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water by a smooth path where they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to oral psalm. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord. The Lord has we are filled with joy. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our lips there were songs. The heathens themselves said, What marvels the Lord worked for them! What marvels the Lord worked for us! Indeed, we were glad. Response? The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage, as streams dry land, as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Response. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. They go out, they go out, full of tears, carrying seeds for the sowing. They come back, they come back, full of song, carrying their sheaves. Response. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest has taken out of mankind, has been taken out of mankind, and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. And so he can sympathise with those who are ignorant or uncertain because he too lives in the limitations of weakness. That is why he has to make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honour upon himself, but each one is called by God, as Aaron was. Nor did Christ give himself the glory of becoming high priest, but he had it from the one who sent, said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And in another text, you are a priest of the order of Melchizedek and forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. According to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus left Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, that is, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting at the side of the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and to say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet, but he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man. Courage, they said, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke. What do you want me to do for you? Rabuni, the blind man, said to him, Master, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. And immediately his sight returned, and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today's gospel is about a blind man. Uh, it happened some 2,000 years ago. But that makes me recall a more modern uh, blind man. Um, and it was at a celebration party where we had the singer Stevie Wonder who met the golf champ, Tiger Woods. And uh, there was a conversation going on. See, Stevie said, you know, I'm a pretty good golf player. And of course, Tiger Woods was thinking in his head, how can a blind man play golf? But the blind singer went on to say, well, look, I have a person at the green where the hole is, and what happens is, I get him to shout out, I've got good sense of hearing, a good sense of direction, 
uh, and distance, and that's how I play very well. So Tiger was impressed, uh, and Stevie suggested that they play around together. When Tiger agreed, uh, Stevie asked, well, what about if we play for a hundred thousand dollars? Tiger said, no way, that wouldn't be right. But um, Stevie really pushed it relentlessly and finally uh, Tiger said, well, when do you want to play? And Stevie laughed and replied, I'll play on any night you choose. <laughs> so it's significant that today's gospel comes right after last Sunday's Gospel about James and John. And in that Gospel, Jesus had just predicted his passion. So he's going to go through a crisis situation of passion and death, and yes, later on, a resurrection. But James and John are asking for the highest positions in the kingdom. They say, you know, can I be at your right hand and your left? And, um, and, and not only, so they don't really understand, they misunderstand. And the other disciples are indignant, so they don't understand out either. Now, this contrasts with today's gospel. We have a physically blind person but who's morally full of sight and insight. We know this by the way he answers and responds to the question, what do you want me to do for you? Um, so this actually contrasts with the disciples who've got physical sight but really are blind spiritually. So pause for a moment. What would your answer be? What would you want Jesus to do for you? To win the lottery? To get a raise? To regain health? To reclaim a lost child? To be rich and famous? So we hear the question, what do you want me to do for you? All the other healings in the Gospel are anonymous. We are never told their name. The exception is this Gospel. We have a name for the man, Bartimaeus. Why did they remember his name and not others? Perhaps it was because he was the only one who gave the best and right answer to Jesus' question when he answered, that I might see. Whether he was cured or not, he wanted to see that is, to see the meaning behind it all, to see what life is all about, to see how to really live, to make some sense in life's confusion and unfairness, to see the hand of God somehow present, to see beyond his physical blindness. It reminds me of the first film in Alpha, um, really to um, find a deep meaning in life. So he was, in a word, asking for faith, for goodness, for moral insight. That is why he followed Jesus along the road. And Jesus said, you have faith. Would that be our prayer? Would that be our response? Some of us are blind to our own faults. Lord, we want to see. Some of us always focus on weaknesses of others. Lord, we want to see. Some never acknowledge many of life's blessings. Lord, we want to see. Some are blinded by unbridled desires for pleasure, money and self-promotion and fail to notice the needs of others. For example, the poor. Lord, we want to see. Some are blinded by pride. They think they are the centre of the universe. 
Lord we want to see. Some wallow in their own self-pity and are turned in on their sins and never take notice of God's mercy. Lord we want to see. Some don't have their prayers answered and need to some sense something deeper is happening in their crosses they bear. Lord, we want to see. We want to see like John Newton, who had a conversion experience and became a priest in the Church of England and devoted his life to serving others. Um, in St Mary's Woodnoth Church in the City of London, there is a large memorial tablet with Newton's own words on it, and it reads, and I read, John Newton Clark, once an infidel and liberty, a servant of slaves in Africa, was by the rich mercy of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, persevered, restored, pardoned, and appointed to preach the faith he had long laboured to destroy. Near 16 years at Olney and 28 years in this church. And it was he who gave us that beautiful hymn we all know. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once lost and now am found, was blind but now I see. That is the kind of sight Bartimaeus was asking for to see as Jesus sees, to seize what, what is really important, which is why the Gospel adds that he immediately followed Jesus. That is, once he saw what was really real, what really counts, he left all, like John Newton, to give his life to Jesus. And part of our vision, really, in this parish, is to encounter Jesus in a real way, in a personal way, and then freely choose to respond to him. According to this Gospel, you recall many rebuked Bartimaeus, telling him to keep silent. We have the same today. Many meaning the media that keeps us endlessly distracted with trivia and a culture that offers really crumbs as the means of salvation. Many rebuke us, telling us to keep silent, not to bring us all that spiritual stuff and real issues of the spirit. But like Bartimaeus, we must cry out the louder, our deepest and most heartfelt needs when Jesus stops before us and asks, what is it that you really want me to do for you? And so, what is your answer? I would suggest if you haven't uh, come to Alpha or joined a discipleship group or viewed um, that wonderful resource in Form.org, uh, that might be a good beginning. And then, um, you can ask yourself the question and listen for the answer. What is it that you really want me to do for you and what is your answer? So now we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today we mark World Mission Day, Sunday, with the theme, We Cannot But Speak About What We Have Seen and Heard. For the Church of God, journeying together with Jesus, that its missionary spirit will be alive so that Jesus may become known to those who have never heard his name. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For every parish emerging from the pandemic, that we will find new ways to reconnect with our parishioners and a new energy and enthusiasm to be missionary, reaching beyond ourselves into our wider society. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly ordained fathers Roger, Aldrin and Sam, that God will grant them a spirit of joy and generosity in their vocations. In your mercy, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For priestly vocations in the Diocese of Broken Bay, may God raise up from among our people shepherds who are ardent but gentle, gentle servants of the Gospel. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this worshipping community, that we may become more authentic witnesses of God's love. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Spirit participants, as they look this week at how they can be freed from fear, anger and the past through the love of the Holy Spirit. We pray they will experience this freedom that God wants for all of us. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including those in our parish community, that they will reach their eternal reward. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also we're looking for a youth coordinator that can make a difference reaching out to the young. So we ask God to uh, help us to find the right person and uh, it may, that it may be a blessing to that person and to the people that that person reaches out to. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you showed mercy to the blind man who called out to you in faith. Grant these prayers and those that remain in our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. 
Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death and by rising from the dead he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his passion and death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 
So at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. So we offer each other some sign of peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus, I 
believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. just at this time so but you're very welcome there's room in our hearts for you <laughs> 